Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So this is a big problem here today. We've had we've had a lot of uh, power shedding going on. I don't know if it, how often it will happen again tonight, but throughout the day it's been on and off. Anyway, we'll go ahead. We'll try. So, everyone uh, finish those three questions without any difficulty, right? We're going to go on to Bhagavad Gita, chapter 13, text number 13. And we're going to hear, remember we finished with the process of knowledge, verses 8 to 12, we're describing the process of knowledge. Right? And then the next section. Oh. The next section, let me show you here, screen sharing. The next section is dealing with, we, scout, we, we covered the, the Shetra and Shetragna, the process of knowledge. The next section is dealing with the object of knowledge, right? Everyone understands what's the object of knowledge? After studying the process of knowledge, what is the object of knowledge? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Prabhuji Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. So, what is the object of knowledge? You can tell me. Krishna. Krishna is the object of knowledge. Okay. About whom we should get the knowledge? About whom we should get the knowledge? About whom we should get the knowledge. So, who is that whom we should get the Who is that? That is Krish, Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Okay. In this particular... Soul and Super Soul, Maharaj. Sorry? Soul and super soul. Soul and super soul. That's exactly what we want, right? In this particular case, the object of knowledge is to understand the soul and the super soul, the knower within all. But the object of knowledge is sometimes the, the, described as the knowable, the knowable, the object of knowledge or the knowable. The knowable means the soul and the super soul and understanding the connection between the two. This, in this particular case that's what's understood by the object of knowledge, Gaya. So text 13 begins, Lord Krishna is going to speak first of all about the soul. We'll just read it, read the translations here. Uh, text 13. I shall now explain the knowable, the knowable, meaning both the soul, the super soul, knowing which you will taste the eternal Brahman, the spirit, beginningless and subordinate to me, lies beyond the cause and effect of this material world. So in this particular verse, Lord Krishna is speaking about the, the individual soul, the Jivatma, at the end of the purport, Prabhupada writes there, it is to be understood that he is Vigyana Brahman as opposed to Ananda Brahman. Ananda Brahman is the Supreme Brahman personality of Godhead, the super soul. But the individual living entity, this is Vigyana Brahman. So a lower stage. Remember when we spoke about the five levels of Brahman, beginning with Anamaya, and then Pranamaya, and then Manamaya or Jnanamaya, and then Vigyanamaya, Vigyanamaya, understanding that beside the material body there's also the spiritual, spiritual particle. But one has not yet understood that there's a Supreme Brahman. So Vigyana, Vigyana Brahman is described there in this text 13. And then 14 to 18 go on to describe the super soul. And Lord Krishna speaks about the super soul in uh, ways which similar to what is used in the Upanishads, in a very uh, 
kind of poetical language, mystical language, you know, awakening people's uh, intellect, stimulating their minds. We'll just read some of it through. Everywhere, text 14, everywhere are his hands and legs, his eyes, heads and faces, and he has ears everywhere. In this way the super soul exists, pervading everything. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Then text 15, the super soul, the original source of all senses, yet he is without senses. He is unattached, although he is the maintainer of all living beings. He transcends the modes of nature and at the same time he is the master of all the modes of material nature. The Supreme Truth, text 16, exists outside and inside of all living beings, the moving and the non-moving. Because he is subtle, he is beyond is beyond the power of the material modes to see or to know. Although far away, he is also near to all. So you can see the kind of language which is being used to present the super soul. Just like we studied in yesterday and the last class, the process of knowledge. The process of knowledge wasn't simply relying on information, but it was helping us to cultivate the qualities necessary to hear from the spiritual... Yeah. Everyone okay? You hearing me? Hello? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. So, the, pro the process of knowledge was... In helping us to cultivate the, the necessary qualities to understand the super-soul and the soul. How will we understand these things? We cannot, the point is, we cannot understand simply by speculation or by our own imperfect senses, because the soul, the super-soul are not material. They're beyond the mind and the senses. We can never understand them by our own efforts. We have to be guided by them. So the process of knowledge was to train us so that we could become guided to, into understanding these things. Text 17. Although the super soul appears to be divided among all beings, he's never divided. He is situated as one, although he is the maintainer of every living entity, it is to be understood that he devours and develops all. So like this, uh, the super soul is being described in these different ways. You, you can see something of a mystery hearing all these different verses. But then text 18 makes it more clearer. In text 18 it becomes much more clear that what is actually being described, what is actually being described is not simply the, the Brahman, but it is the super soul. Text 18, Lord Krishna says, He is the source of light in all luminous objects. He is beyond the darkness of matter and is unmanifest. He is knowledge. He is the object of knowledge. He is the goal of knowledge. He is situated in everyone's heart. So, very important for us to understand the position of the living entity in relation to the super soul. So, this, these texts here, very attractive for the impersonalists, for the Mayavadis. They take great pleasure in these kind of verses because they can screw their own meanings to them. So it's very important that when we study these verses, we hear them from the devotees. Okay, so in this way Krishna, Lord Krishna is describing the relationship, uh, rather the object of knowledge. In text 19, 
he he goes on Maharaj Hare Krishna yes Maharaj can I ask some yeah from here about knowledge there are three uh, three things given here he is knowledge and he is object of knowledge and he is goal of knowledge now object of knowledge and goal of knowledge is okay fine understand you know mm -hmm. but then he is knowledge can you just uh, shed some light on this <laughs> what does it mean he is knowledge how did we describe knowledge earlier at the beginning of this chapter that question was asked right what was knowledge do you remember yeah three things the kshetra the, and the, the field of activities the, yeah and the knower of the field right the two yeah. the two knowers of the field so that is actually knowledge right that was how knowledge was defined to understand the field of activities, the body, and the knower of the field, the soul and the super soul, and the connection with these things. So then, that's knowledge. Then the object, the object of knowledge, is putting, making proper use of this knowledge. Mm. Well, Okay, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I mean, th this is India, you know. This this time of the year. Sorry about this, but what to do? To reply the the question. It's a good question. To understand knowledge, the object of knowledge, and the goal of knowledge. I'll give the example. Maybe you have you heard of the concept sambanda, abhidaya, and prayojana. Prabhu, sambanda means. Knowledge, yes, knowledge of the, yes, yeah, knowledge of the relationship, right? You have knowledge of the relationship, and then Abhidaya is applying that knowledge. 
how to apply that knowledge, and then the goal of knowledge, to develop the love for the Lord. So like that here, Lord Krishna is saying knowledge, the object of knowledge, the goal of knowledge. Is that okay? Yes, Mother, it's fine. Thank you. Okay, so verse number 19 is a summary of this, uh, what's been discussed. It's just, if you read through the purport there, it's actually very nice and if it, it just summarizes what what's being, has been described. The second paragraph, it says, Now to summarize, one may understand verses 6 and 7 beginning with Mahabhutani and continuing through Chaitana Dritti. That was describing the elements of the material body. Analyze the material elements and manifestations of the symptoms of life. Then uh, these combine to form the body or the field of activities. Verses 8 to 12 describe the process of knowledge for understanding both types of knower of the field of activities, namely the soul and super soul. Then verses 13 through 18, which we're just covering tonight, beginning from Anadi Matparam and continuing through Ridi Sarvashya Vashtitam, describe the soul and the super soul, or the, the Lord, the Supreme Lord. So, like that. So Lord Krishna has completed answers to these four things. He's described the body, the knower of the body and the object of knowledge and then like that. Now he's going to go on the, the, because Arjuna had asked also about Purusha and Prakriti. And they were the first things which Arjuna asked about but Krishna left them till the end because they're, they're more complex. So verses 20 to 24 are going to describe 20 to 24 are going to describe Prakriti and Purush. Yes? Is that a question there? Maharaji, can you please repeat what you just said? Thank you. Yes, verses I said verses 20 to 24 are going to describe Prakriti and Purush because Lord Krishna has not replied to that section yet for Arjuna. And that was Arjuna's first question. Remember Arjuna asked about six items? So Lord Krishna has explained four of them, but he did not yet explain the Prakriti or the Purush. So this is coming now, verses 20 to 24. Okay? Okay, Prabhuji. Maharaj, 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 sorry. sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay, I'm not, uh, not a problem. So we'll, we'll read through these verses, let's see what's happening here. Verse number 20 talks about material nature and living entities should be understood to be beginningless. The, their transformations and the modes of matter are products of material nature. So. To what is to be understood here, that the material nature, okay, we know the living entities are beginningless, that we're anadi, right? We don't take birth, we don't die, but we're surprised, it's sometimes a bit puzzling for us to understand material nature also is beginningless, because we see the elements of the material world, we see them come into existence, we see them being destroyed. And we think, you know, they're temporary. We think of the world as temporary. But Prabhupada gives the example, he said, just like clouds, they appear in the sky and then they disappear. But they're still there. Sometimes they're manifest, sometimes they're not. But they're still existing. So material nature is like that, the prakriti. It's existing, but sometimes it's manifest, sometimes it's not. It's also beginningless. Hare 
Krishna Maharaj. Yes. So one question. Mm -hmm. uh, so it would be uh, um, inappropriate to say that uh, this material world is temporary and it is um, it gets destroyed. Um, the dissolution uh, happens, or should it be say uh, it's temporary, it manifests and unmanifest uh, uh, like the clouds? How do we put that when we uh, sometimes refer to that verse to Kalem Ashashwatam? <laughs> yes, right. We, we do say the material nature is temporary, meaning the manifestations of the material nature are temporary. Just like the elements, they still exist. The elements exist, but they, they just undergo transformations. You know, we have transformed everything. Our houses are made up of cement and bricks and glass and so many things. And all of these things come from more basic elements of the material nature of the material planet. And so they come, they, they, they exist for some time, then they go back. And the elements of the planet, they're, they're, they come into existence, they come from the body of Mahavishnu, right? They, they, everything is created through the power of the Supreme Lord. They become manifest, they exist for some time, then unmanifest. But the material nature is beginningless. Just sometimes we see it. At, we, yes. Uh, so we can say like that the words uh, Brahma Satya Jagat Mithya means here we can see that Jagat Mithya is uh, false because material nature is beingless. So it is there. Like that we can understand? Yes, generally we do say we don't agree with that Brahman Satyam Jagat Mithya. We say Brahman Satyam Jagat Satyam. Yes, it's, 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 it, it, it's, also, it's also real, right? The, the material world is real. But it, it, it just undergoes many different transformations. Yeah, yeah, and some. Thank you. Yeah, okay. We'll go ahead. Text number 21. Uh, an interesting verse describing. Uh, let's read the verse. Text 21. Nature is said to be the cause of all material causes and effects. Whereas the living entity is the cause of the various sufferings and enjoyments in this world. In the purport, Srila Prabhupada writes about the different bodies which we have, describes them like different uh, residencies. Just like people have different residencies, we know someone's living in a tent, and someone's living in the big apartment. Why do people have these different residencies? What determines the residence which we have? Someone would like to say why why people are all living in different residencies? Is it it's because of it's different Maharaj. different desires? Yes, different desires. desires is one thing, not but not only desire, right? There's some different time balance, bank balance of karma. Right, that's so one at a time. Okay, so those two things are there: the desire and the karma. Right, these two things they determine the particular residence, the particular kind of body. Right? The bo this body is just like a residence. So just as we're living in different places for, uh, for this body, the body which we're given is also the result of our past activities and our desires. It puts us into different situations. So the material nature acts on us in these different ways. Uh, we get, we take a body, and we have to, we have to accept that body. And in that particular body, it doesn't matter what body we get. Every every living entity, they're thinking themselves to be the Lord and the Master, and they're acting for their enjoyment. 
we become very comfortable in the material body. Doesn't matter how hellish situation may be, but the living entity actually becomes comfortable in their material bodies. Uh, Prabhupada gave the example how Indra had been cursed by his spiritual master. Indra had made some offense against Brihaspati and Brihaspati thought, I'll teach him a lesson and cursed him to become a pig. And so Indra took the body of a pig and he was living in the pig farm with all the other pigs. And so after some time then Brihaspati took compassion on him and he came back to him and he said to Indra, he said, Okay, now you've been here long enough, you should come back with me, come back. But Indra in the form of the pig was saying, No, I'm fine here, I like it here, I have a nice time here. The farmer brings us big buckets of food every day, I have many family here, my family is very, I have many offspring from my wives here, nobody's cursing me for having more than one wife. I'm very happy here. Why I should come with you? So this Hare Krishna? Hare Krishna? Oh, Maharaj, we, we, we are listening, we are listening. Oh. We are listening, Maharaj. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm never sure because <laughs> I don't know about the power going off or not. Okay, so the Indra didn't want to come back, he was thinking, I'm fine here. So then Brihaspati went and brought the butcher and the butcher came with a big knife and said, okay, where's that biggest, fattest pig? And that was Indra. And Indra then, he understood the situation and he screamed and he came running. He asked his guru, okay, okay, please take me. And so this is a power of the material illusion that we're put into different bodies, into different conditions. And no matter how terrible it may be, we're thinking, oh, it's not so bad, I'm all right here, I'm having a good time. <laughs> well, we can see the situation now, you know, with this uh, lockdown situation everywhere and so much disease and the threat of disease. And so this is the material world, very temporary, miserable place so many problems, but still we're thinking, no, I can enjoy, I'm happy, any moment, you know, we'll forget it all, we will enjoy. So then text 22 comes up, text 22, a very important verse, because this verse 22 will be the seed for the next chapter. So uh, we'll read this verse, the living entity in material nature thus follows the ways of life, enjoying the three modes of nature. This is due to his association with that material nature. Thus he meets with good and evil among various species. Okay, so there's an association with the material nature, the three modes. Prakrite guna jan ka, bhunte prakriti jan guna. Purusha prakriti stohi bhunte prakriti jan guna. Right? So the, the gunas, the modes of nature, their guna sangha, karanam guna sangha sada sad yoni janmasu. So this association with material nature influences the living entity and due to the influence of these modes of nature, we're taking birth in different conditions of life, 8,400,000 different species of life. So this is the situation. We have the Prakriti, the material nature, which is comprised of the three modes of nature. And there's a Purush. The problem is we are thinking we are the supreme Purusha, but we're tiny Purushas, we're not the real Purush, right? We're also actually Prakriti. Our position is to be subordinate to the Supreme Lord. but. We're not thinking like that. We have that, we still have that enjoying mentality. We want to lord, we want to conquer over, we want to enjoy. So this is the situation. Going ahead, text number 23. 
Lord Krishna describes more. Uh, yet in this body there is another, a transcendental enjoyer, who is the Lord, the supreme proprietor, who exists as the overseer and permitter, and who is known as the super soul. This is a very important verse also. You can see the different words describing the position of the super soul, that he is upadrasta, he's the overseer, and the anumanta, the permitter, meaning the super soul is a, you know, with us in every, as we move through the different bodies in the material world, the super soul accompanies us and he sees all of our activities, he sees our attempts to enjoy, he's looking at us. Remember the example was given, two birds in the tree, one bird's eating the fruit, the other bird is watching, the witness, right? He's a witness, he's the upadrasta and the anumanta, he's the overseer, he's the permitter. Sometimes he permits, sometimes he doesn't. Right? He gives us pretty much independence. Prabhupada gives the example, just like the son wants to smoke and the father may say, no, no, don't smoke, but the son may be very persistent. So after some time the father may have to give in, he may have to give permission, he may have to tell the son, all right, you go and smoke, if it, you, it's up to you, you do what you want, I can't be responsible. So the same way the Lord watches, he's trying to guide us, he's trying to help us, he's trying to bring us out of this material world. He's there mentioned here in this chapter how he relates with the living entity. A transcendental enjoyer, the supreme proprietor, the overseer, the permitter, known as the super soul. I want you to just take a few minutes here just to read through this purport for yourself and pick out some of the different items, different characteristics by which the Lord reciprocates with the living entity, how he relates to the living entity. Yeah? Can you just read it through yourself in the purport? And as you come to different points which you think relate to the, you know, the relationship between the Lord and the living entity, then you can note them down and then you can also tell, tell us and we'll give them out in front of, let us all hear. Is it clear? Yes, yes Maharaj. Yes, this is text number 23. We want to know about the relationship between the Lord and the living entity. How does he relate to them, to, to the living entity? Okay, someone's got some points? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, uh, this uh, Paramatma is there inside our uh, living entity and uh, the soul and the super soul. Uh, so this uh, Paramatma is sanctioning the uh, desires of the living entity. 
Okay. And is watching what what the living entity is doing. Okay. Yes, he is continuous companion. He is continuous companion to us, and he don't take part in any activities, but he witness oversees all the activities. All right. But how how does he actually how, how how does he actually relate? You know how does he get involved? He doesn't just always all the time. It's not like he's impartial, just st standing there watching. He does also participate. He does get involved. I'm I'm more interested to know about how he actually gets involved. What is relationship there? Uh, he, he guides us. He's our well wisher, He's our friend. Sure. Yeah, from I want to hear it from the purport. Break out the sentence, the points which are in the purport. So in the purport, yeah. someone said there was a good point. Someone said he is a friend. Just at, at the end of the first paragraph, there are innumerable living entities. He is staying in them as a friend, right? As a friend. So there's one point yes, here. Yes. Right. Intimate, intimately related as friends also. The individual is uh, bhukta or the uh, sustained and the Lord is bhokta or maintainer. Okay, he's the maintainer. One more, one more. The, the, the Lord is always eager to take him back to the spiritual energy. Yes, that's a good point. Yes. Is always giving instruction from within and from without. From without, he gives instruction as stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Ah. And basically, he convinces us that the living entity, like the activities in the material field, are not conductive to real happiness. Oh, very good. Yes, right. That's a good point. Right. So, from within, he's giving instruction to guide us. And from without, he's speaking the Bhagavad Gita. Good. Anything else? Let me see, I think I have... Let me see. He yeah. tries to convince the living entity that his activities in the material field are not conducive to real happiness. Can you say that again? Um, uh, he tries to convince the living entity uh -huh. that his activities are not conducive to real happiness. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's certainly a valid point that he's con trying to convince us. Uh, can I just use the screen sharing here for a minute, Prabhu? Thank you. I'll just show you what I got from it. Mm. Here. First of all, friends, intimately related as friends. He stays with him just to get him to return to the spiritual energy and always eager to take him back to the spiritual energy. Yeah, we had that. From within, it convinces activities not conducive to real happiness, and from without, instructions in the Bhagavad Gita. Okay, so these are, there's five points there. So, very good. I think you got pretty much those points. It's good for us to know these, uh, how, the, how the Lord is helping, how He's caring for us, trying to help us in this. So this is a, a very nice verse to remember. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Y yes. The, in the list, uh, the fifth point from outside, can you just shed some light on that? It's not very clear to me. Yeah, okay. From without, he gives instructions, as stated in Bhagavad Gita. From without, he gives instructions, and, and from within, he tries to convince the living entity that his activities in the material field are not conducive to real happiness. Just give it up, 
and turn your faith towards me, then you will be happy, he says. Thus the intelligent person who places his faith in the Paramatma or the Supreme Personality of Godhead begins to advance towards a blissful eternal life of knowledge. So from the heart, Krishna is, we say, you, you know, maybe you're familiar from in a few, few chapters, 15th chapter, how the super soul is functioning, giving knowledge and remembrance and forgetfulness based on our, on our own desire. The, do we want to remember? Do we actually want to get out of this world? Krishna helps us. If he sees that we have a little inclination, that we're, we're not happy, we're dis suffering, we're, we're feeling the pain of this material world, we want to get out, Krishna gives us a direction. He arranges for us to help us, the super soul in the heart. By the mercy of Krishna in the heart, we get the spiritual teacher. And then by the mercy of the spiritual teacher, we get Krishna. So the Lord in the heart plays a, a big part of it. He's helping us to come to Krishna. He's directing us. He's reminding us how much misery, how much suffering, how we're, we're we've been struggling so hard trying to enjoy. We've never been satisfied. We've never succeeded. So many problems one after another. So eventually we become a little thoughtful about it and we think, what is the alternative? Where to go? What to do? What should I do? And so at that point, Krishna can send, He can direct us to take guidance from spiritual teachers to get good instruction, to show us the path out from this material world. So the Chetya Guru, the Lord in the heart. Yeah, we say Chetya Guru, the Lord in the heart. He's the super soul. He's, he can help us like that. When he sees that we have that actual desire. Actually, many times the Lord in the heart is speaking to us, telling us. Sometimes, you know, you may eat something which is, in, in, in the Lord in the heart, he tells you, oh, you know, you, know, you shouldn't have eaten that. Oh, that's not good. Oh, you shouldn't drink that. In the heart, Krishna is speaking to us, but often we don't hear. That's the problem. But the Lord is there. He's accompanying us as a super soul, trying to guide us, trying to help us. He's constantly speaking to us. But are we hearing? Often we're not so willing to hear. But He's there and He never gives up. He accompanies us in all the different species of life trying to help us, to bring us out of this illusion. Is that all right? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. Krishna Maharaj, can you say one point? Yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, in fact, uh, every individual living in city, it is a eternally part and the parcel of the Supreme Lord. Yes. Uh, actually, what is happening here, Actually, uh, what is happening here, the Supreme Lord as his friend, the Super Soul, stays with him just to get him to return to the spiritual energy. The Lord always, Lord is always eager to take him to back to the spiritual energy. Yes, exactly. And right, right. Yes, you're right. The Lord is always eager to bring us out from this material world. He's accompanying us here in this world. His mission is to help us to get out. And when we get out of this material world, then the super soul is very happy. His work is done. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Krishna. We'll go ahead. Text 24. One who understands this philosophy Concerning material nature, the living entity and the interactions of the modes of nature is sure to attain liberation. He will not take birth here again, regardless 
of the present problem, of, of, regardless of his present position. So this is the result of understanding this knowledge, right? The philosophy concerning Prakriti and the Purusha and the modes of nature. So this is just this verse is simply telling us what is the result. You get out, we can get free, we can get out of this material world. So that's something very wonderful. So cultivating this knowledge, very important. So how we can get this knowledge? How we can understand the super soul? Text 25 goes on to describe different ways in which we can understand the super soul. Some perceive the super soul within themselves through meditation, others through the cultivation of knowledge, and still others through working without fruitive desires. So, not everybody is going to do, you know, is going to study the Bhagavad Gita and, and learn this knowledge from the bona fide spiritual master. There are different processes by which one can acquire this knowledge. So, one process is mentioned through meditation. So, what kind of people do meditation? Who's doing this kind of meditation generally? To understand the super soul? Ganesh. Ages, yogis, yogis. Yogis, what kind of yogi? What kind of yogi? Astanga yogis. Yes, right, the Astanga yogi. Good. Yeah, the Astanga yogi. They like to do meditation, right? They start with the yam and the niyam and the asan and the pranayam, and then after that, it's all meditation. Hmm. Prajahara, Dharna, Dhyana, Samadhi, right? This is the Astanga Yoga. So the Astanga Yogis, they like to do meditation. And then, who does it? Who cultivates knowledge? Jnanis. Who are, who are these Jnanis? There's a particular type of philosophy. Anybody, any idea? Cultivate knowledge? Sankhya Yoga. Yes, right. Sankhya Yoga. Thank you. Yeah, the Sankhya Yogis, those who follow Kapila, they will cultivate the knowledge to understand the Super Soul. Lord Kapila, we study uh, Kapila Shiksha is coming in there in the third canto Srimad Bhagavatam. But th there's another there's another Kapila, the Atheist Kapila. And they teach atheistic sankhya. So atheistic sankhya is not what we want, but that's what's popular. That's what's understood. People are very atheistic in the world today. So they like to cultivate this atheistic knowledge. But actually the real sankhya is from Lord Kapila, the son of Devahuti. And it's in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And then, working without fruit of desires, who is that? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Maharaj, one doubt. Uh, is there a difference between the Sankhya philosophy by Kapila Maharaj, Kapil Dev, and uh, what um, uh, in Bhagavad Gita is spoken, or is the same? Is, are the two philosophies, Sankhya philosophies, same or different? Uh, a little, it's a little different presentation. You know, the word Sankhya simply means analytical, an, an analytical approach to studying the elements. But what's used as Sankhya in the Bhagavad Gita is quite different from how it's presented in Srimad Bhagavatam. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. So, the third section, working without fruit of desires, this is karma, you know, niskam karma yogis. Karma, niskam karma yogis, right? You've studied all this. In the, actually, you've studied these three different philosophies in the first six chapters of Bhagavad Gita. The Astanga Yoga was there, and some little bit of Sankhya was also there, and also Karma Yoga was also there, working without fruit of desires. 
you know, people working without fruit of desires, they also have to understand the super soul. They also, they also have to do some kind of meditation, but generally their main work is detachment, working, getting detached from the material energy. Okay, so these are different processes by which one can understand the super soul. So maybe we can't do these either, maybe this is too much for us, so is there any other way we can understand the super soul? So, yes, Maharaj. Yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj. The most important uh, uh, process which we saw in the out of the strength, you know, that uh, the bhakti yoga, that is the most important process that is missing here. Yes. Yes, but not everybody is able to do bhakti yoga. Right? But that's the most important, isn't it? Yes, that's the most important. It is the most important. But what if, if you want those who have uh, acquired the spiritual knowledge through, through hearing yes. from, other from other devotee? Yeah, we're, that's the next verse. <laughs> that's the, that's Maharaj, in the last part of the uh, purport of the 25th, it is said that um, uh, so the, similarly, there are others who also try to understand the super soul by the cultivation of knowledge. And there are those who cultivate through Hatha Yoga system and who try to satisfy the Supreme Lord by childish activities. Childish activities, uh, how does that, how can we understand that Maharaj? What is childish activity? Well, Prabhupada is talking about the yogis doing their asanas, you know, twist, okay. twisting and bending the body. This is their childish the activity. Hatha Yoga. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. the gymnastics, you know. <laughs> this is what Prabhupada okay. means when he talks about childish activities. Yeah, the Hatha Yogi system. It doesn't, hmm? it doesn't refer to those pujas or some social uh, festivals that we may do. It doesn't refer like that. Not that. No. Yes. Mm. no. Thank you, Maharaj. Yes. Maharaj? Yes? Yeah. The, the, Activity without an activity, it is given, no? Karma Kanda. Normally, Karma Kanda, the, with fruitive activity only, we perform. Oh, no, Maharaj, in their attitude. Who work with fruitive activity only, Karma Kanda, no, Maharaj? I have a doubt in that. You haven't seen. <coughs> Correct. Yeah, I don't know. Hare Krishna Maharaj, who works without fruitive results are perfect in their attitude, karma kanda activity. It is given no Maharaj in that purport. Sorry? Those who work without fruitive results are also perfect in their attitude. Karma kanda people will work for with fruitive results only, no Maharaj, work for fruitive results. Here it is given without fruitive results. Yes, well, there are different levels of karma yoga. Not everybody works with fruitive results. You see, that's, you're, Thank you. you're speaking about one level of karma kanda is a material activity. What we're speaking about is karma yoga. Karma yoga is on the yoga ladder, right? You studied the yoga ladder earlier. So karma kanda is a material activity, it's, done, it's selfish, it's done for material benefit. We're not speaking about karma kanda, we're speaking about karma yoga. And there's different levels of karma yoga. There's sakama karma yoga and niskam karma yoga. So sakama karma yoga, we're still attached to the results of the work, but we may sacrifice some tiny portion. But Niskam Karma Yoga is very high level of Karma Yoga and it's very close to Bhakti Yoga. And when one, can, when one is actually detached from the results of the work, then it's very powerful and, very, and then it's, it's almost like, just like Bhakti Yoga. Thank you, Magaraj. Understood. Thank you, Magaraj. Okay. So, 
three, the three processes were mentioned in 25, 26 goes on, but somebody's not able to do any of these yoga processes which were mentioned. They don't want to meditate, they can't study Kapila Shiksha, they can't do those, this Karma Yoga. And so what to do, verse number 26 says, again, there are those who, although not conversant in spiritual knowledge, begin to worship the Supreme Person upon, upon hearing about Him from others. Because of their tendency to hear from authorities, they also transcend the path of birth and death. So this is a very interesting verse. Uh, pr probably I'll just use the screen sharing again, please. Yeah, it, can I use the screen sharing? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I just want to, let me see, where is it? Okay, here we are. We have a little exercise for you. We want you to read this through. Verse number 26, in this verse particularly, the process of hearing is strongly recommended, and this is very appropriate. Although the common man is often not as capable as so-called philosophers, faithful hearing from an authoritative person will help one transcend this material existence and go back to Godhead, back to home. Now what I want you to do, is mentioned here, discuss how faithful hearing helped you to become a devotee. And then secondly, what general principles regarding Srila Prabhupada and ISKCON's mission can be seen in this verse and purport. Okay? So, we're going to give you five minutes break. You're also going to... Yeah? Maharaj, please, can you repeat the second question? Okay. We cannot see your screen, Maharaj. Huh? We cannot see your screen, Maharaj. Really? What happened? Yes. Well, let me... The screen is not... Let me do it again. Sorry. Maybe I didn't do it properly. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I forget to open the screen sharing. Uh. Okay, you can see it now? Yes, you, Yeah? Everybody clear? You got it? Yes. Yes, thank you, Maras. I'm sorry, but that's my fault. So, we're giving you five, ten minutes. I want you a five minutes break, five minutes to look at, over this and think about what general principles regarding Srila Prabhupada and ISKCON's mission can be seen in this verse. Is it clear? Okay. Yes, Maharaj. So look over this. Let's see what you can come up with.
Okay. Yes. Yes, Maharaj. All right. Can we go ahead? Would somebody like to be able to contribute to us something about this now? The first question. Yes, Maharaj. Maybe you yeah. can, mm, Sh question Shana number Pupad. one. Hmm? Go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah. We regard Shila Prabhupada as a authoritative, authoritative source because he is a pure soul and pure devotee. And he has, uh, he has throughout his life, he has done enormous amount of hard work and and caring for us, us you know. So, so he has shown a lot of compassion for all the living entity. And that's why we take him as a authoritative source. So whatever information he has given us, we have a f firm faith on that. So with that firm faith, when we read his uh, books, so that goes to our heart easily and we, we there, there is no what you call argument against his what he has uh, given us information so, okay so you're and, saying you yes. maybe you you're saying you, you came to krishna consciousness through Prabhupada's books you got one of Prabhupada's books yeah. and you were yes from display succession also sorry disciplic succession yes you mean a representative of Srila Prabhupada? He himself is a, uh, has come to disciplic succession. Yes. Did you and meet Prabhupada? Your, your, your... You, you never met Prabhupada personally, did you? We have seen, we are reading his book. Yes, yeah, you met him through the book, right? I'm saying like that. You got him through the book. Yes. Okay. So. So when we have a firm faith on him, and whatever book he has written, so we, we can, we, it, it, it helps us easily uh, imbibe those things okay. without any uh, article doubt. All right. Okay. So what general principles regarding Prabhupada and his transmission can be seen in this verse? Second question. Maharaj? Yes? There is no education for spiritual matters. And uh, Prabhupada feels that there is no education in this modern society for spiritual matters. And um, uh, there is practically no knowledge of philosophy. It's only becoming an atheistic agnostic system. And for that, it's the best process is to chant and hear the transcendental love vibration of Mahaprabhu's Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Yes. So, just chant Hare Krishna. Don't bother speaking philosophy. Follow his footsteps, Maharaj. You have to follow the footsteps, not only uh, but also put it into practice by following the footsteps of the Acharya. Yes. So Pra Prabhupada's program was kirtan and then speak some philosophy. First kirtan, then some philosophy, then again kirtan. And of course prasadam is also there. Prabhupada had this program. He understood people in general, Kali Yuga, were not very philosophical. You can see Prabhupada's lectures in the beginning. He was lecturing quite a long time, sometimes one hour and more. But then later on, he reduced the lectures to a half an hour, generally. He didn't like to go much more than half an hour. Because he was aware of the inability of the audience to focus for long periods of time. So he arranged like that. Speak for some time. First kirtan, then speak, and then more kirtan. Every activity, there must be kirtan, very important. The holy name. Very, with deity worship also, it's not good to just worship the deity without kirtan. The kirtan is very powerful. So Prabhupada's temples are like that. 
did you have any personal experience yourself in hearing from authoritative persons? Yeah. Yeah, Maharaj. Means, uh, we, means we found, I found that it removes the anarthas, like anger, anxieties, and uh, also it makes us, you know, more uh, peace, peaceful and calm to understand others. Means, uh, there's a lot of uh, qualities uh, get imbibed by hearing the authorities, authority from the authorities, uh, uh, you know, mouths and the Maharajas and all those. Yeah. So it's very important that you have to see some people who show the example, right? You want to see the example. And Maharaj, uh, also hearing uh, from bona fide spiritual masters uh, helps us in a way that we develop taste in hearing more of it and we gradually lose taste in material desires and inclinations. So that also happens with constant hearing and doing kirtan. Okay. Have you had that experience yourself? Yes, definitely. Like uh, when you start hearing the philosophy and kirtan, you you find a greater uh, enjoyment in that. You feel, and then other material things and material desires don't really make much sense. So that's that's what. Uh, has been like somewhat my experience. Okay, good. Yeah, and we, we, we lost so many material friends, so many material friends. <laughs> that, 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 your, your old friends, you mean your material friends? In the, in the, those people were. Those ones. Material, old friends, yeah, old friends. Before coming to Iskorn, who were the old friends. Uh, so, as Madhya told, we lose the interest in uh, keeping association with those people. And so we lose them uh, in due course of time. Mm -hmm. And we develop the new taste and the higher taste with the devotees. And we develop new friends as devotees. Okay. <laughs> hmm. uh, Prabhupada, so, uh, Prabhupada gave the example. He said uh, it's something like becoming a devotee is something like getting married. You know, when you get married, you get new friends also, right? <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes you can, you know, the wife will say, you take me, I want to go with you, don't go alone, you know, you can't go with your friends, you have to come with, take me. And so you often end up getting new friends when you get married. You give up the old friends, you know, when you're single and you have, you're married now, so you have different friends. And so becoming a devotee is a bit like that. You, 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 you get, get away from the old friends. <laughs> The ones who are not inclined to bhakti yoga and who not who don't want all the rules and regulations, you know, and so they they give up your association and uh, they go away. So, okay. <laughs> also, Maharaj, the second part of the second question, when we see uh, when we see the seven purposes of Iskon, it quietly proves that. Yes. Right. When Prabhupada established ISKCON, he, he, his, you know, these seven principles or the, the, the rules for the organization of ISKCON based on giving people the chance to hear and to cultivate some interest in their spiritual life. And Prabhupada was concerned for the spiritual well-being of people. So the ISKCON society was meant for this purpose, to give people good spiritual education. So we're trying to fulfill this purpose. Of course Prabhupada says, people not so much interested in philosophy, but by chanting, by contact with the holy name, then the heart becomes cleansed. And as the heart becomes purified, then we develop more interest in the philosophy. Then the knowledge all starts to make more sense to us, once we have cleansed the heart. So the, the chanting is a very important part of the program. We often find new people, you know, in the beginning people coming, they need a lot of kirtan. 
And of course, they need a lot of prasadam. <laughs> These two things help very much to get people uh, well established in Krishna consciousness. Then, then gradually they start to take an interest in studying the philosophy and in taking part in the programs. So, just like we're doing here, you know, this Bhakti Shastri program is a very nice play, way in which we can become more familiar with the knowledge, uh, learning the teachings, what's in these books. And Prabhupada said, we didn't publish the books just for the devotees to tell, but it's for the devotees to read them as well and understand the knowledge. I had experience, we had one of our devotees in China, and he went to the university in China, and he was distributing some Bhagavad Gita there, he was introducing it to some people there. And the, the one man was listening to the devotee present the Bhagavad Gita, and he said, he said, this is amazing. He said, you know this book so well. He said, I've never heard, he said, you know, we study at university, people don't know any of our books well. But you study this book so well, you know it so well, <laughs> it must be something really special. You've gone into it so well, so deeply. And so like that, we, uh, we, we do want to know what's in these books. And Prabhupada, when we would go for walks with Prabhupada in the morning, Prabhupada would also be with us walking and he would question us. He would say, do you know this verse? Do you remember that verse from Bhagavad Gita? Like this, Prabhupada was training us. He wanted us that we should know the Bhagavad Gita, we should be able to quote. Okay, anybody else like to contribute anything in this topic? No one? Uh, Maharaj, uh, I just wanted to say uh, that uh, by hearing, uh, by hearing the Kirtan and philosophy, we all, the dormant, uh, the dormant uh, love which we all have inherently within us, which is at the moment in a dormant state. So with constant hearing, uh, it, it gets awakened. So that's the, that's very important. So constant hearing is important. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Very nice. Yes, we want to give everyone the chance to hear, try to let people hear. We want to, you know, nowadays, you know, with the use of the chanting box, they have these chanting boxes with the constant chanting, Prabhupada chanting. There are so many devotee homes we go to and you'll hear the chanting box. And many homes here have the chanting box running 24 hours a day. <laughs> so they can always be hearing. It's very nice. So uh, Prabhupada also quotes Lord Chaitanya, uh, how Lord Chaitanya uh, he told people, you don't need to change your position. Uh, there's a verse actually there in the Srimad Bhagavatam 10th canto, where Lord Brahma is speaking. He's saying, stay in your position. Just stay where you are. You don't have to change your situation, but just hear in the association of devotees. Mm. And by hearing, without the, the, the idea is give up speculation. Don't try to, you know, some people are so proud. I know everything. I can do it myself. I can understand. And they want to try to understand by the power of their own mind and senses. But if they'll just hear, it's all there for us. It's all in the books. Here, read the books and you'll get all the answers. And sometimes when we have Ratiatra festivals, we'll have a booth, you know, question and answers. And people can come with their questions and the devotees will sit there and answer all their questions. Okay, thank you very much for this. We'll go ahead. Maharaj, I have one question. Oh, yes? Uh, um, some people about this 24 hour uh, chanting uh, of the Prabhupada box, chanting box, uh, some people keep the chanting box in the temple and uh, then they are busy with other works uh, in other rooms or sleeping in other rooms. How it is, uh, you know, uh, 
I don't understand that means making Prabhupada and the holy name and we are not listening it and whereas we are engaged now in other works. So how it is, uh, I'm, 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 I'm trying to understand about it means whether it is okay like that. I don't see any fault in that because it's a good, you know, the background is there because they're, they're doing other works, but the, their other works will stop and start, stop and start. So whenever they stop, you know, immediately the chanting is there. It's not that they have to go and turn it on. And just by having the chanting continually going, then that room will become very sanctified. It will become very powerful, full of the spiritual sound vibration. So, you know, I, I, I don't see any fault in that. You know, of course, they're doing other work, but at the same time, it's a very powerful background just to hear the chanting going on. So Yeah, I, I agree with that, but I want to ask that, you know, keeping the chanting, uh, you know, chanting in the temple room, and we are doing some other work in other rooms, mm -hmm. in the bedroom, or sleeping at, at some time, and Prabhupada uh, the chanting. So, is it that the insert of the chanting, or uh, I'm to understand about uh, like that? I don't know. I, I, don't know. I, I don't see any offense. I don't see any offense there. I think there's no harm okay, okay. to keep the to keep the chanting box going. It's very good because if you turn it off, then you may forget to turn it back on. But if it's always running, then you you know immediately you'll hear it. You'll hear it. Even you, you may be asleep, you wake up, you hear the chanting. Immediately you hear the chanting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, Hare Krishna Maharaj, I have a question. Yes. Uh, Maharaj, I had a question regarding the last paragraph that we just discussed, that one, if one follows the path of uh, Bhakti Yoga, that is listening to Bhagavatam and listening to Srima, uh, Bhagavad Gita and also if it is um, merged with one of the yoga process that we just discussed in the previous verses that is uh, for example if we consider meditation that is uh, Ashtanga Yoga if one follows both Ashtanga Yoga and also surrenders to the Lord Bhakti Yoga, Bhakti yoga yes. will this uh, clash or is this going to benefit or is are, or do they are they going to be um, are we not going to be going in line because we will be dedicating some time for uh, the Ashtanga Yoga in our daily process. But in case of Bhakti Yoga, we have to be completely um, dedicating the time for Bhakti. So is, there, is it okay to continue or is it, um, is it beneficial or not is what I would like to understand. Well, you have to consider what, what is your actual attitude towards the Astanga Yoga. How are, are you considering it something which you're just doing for your health or is it for your spiritual well-being? It's for spiritual well-being and also for personal health for spiritual well-being. Uh -huh. we, we know from the Bhagavad Gita what is uh, the problems with the Astanga Yoga process that you know how how are you supposed what is uh, what is actually required to properly perform astanga yoga you don't do it at home you know you don't sit at home and do it you have to get out from the house you have to go to the the remote place and you go alone <laughs> you know it, it's a very very challenging thing to practice you know seriously astanga yoga you know, what you really have Maharaj, to do. actually, I think, uh, yes, I actually was uh, uh, not meaning Ashtanga Yoga, I was just meaning basic yoga practices just to keep yourself healthy, that's it. Well, Prabhupada's not against us keeping ourselves healthy. We do have to take care of the body. And the body is given to us by Krishna, and we do have to keep it healthy so that we can use it in Krishna's service. So if you find some yoga exercises help to keep you healthy, there's no harm. Thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. That's all I wanted to do. We do have a number of devotees who teach yoga. And, you know, it, 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 it's a, a very nice way of uh, meeting people also who are generally interested in spiritual practice. And it, it's something which you can do to 
yeah, it's certainly more in line with the mode of goodness also. Some exercise, you know, we need to, we do need to get some exercise to keep the body healthy and uh, so that we can use it for Krishna's service. It shouldn't be an over endeavor, it shouldn't be too much time, you know, it shouldn't be like you're doing exercises for three, four hours a day, that's very, a bit, a bit excessive, I would think. But, you know, if you, if you do some yoga in the day, some, you know, I, I wouldn't know how much time, maybe like a half an hour or something, an hour at the most, you know, like that. Then it can keep you healthy, and that's good, because you need a healthy body to serve Krishna. Agree. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. I have a doubt. Yes. Uh, just before you told us uh, the chanting box, what is a uh, uh, chanting box? Can you tell me, please? Mm. Hare Krishna. I couldn't hear. Mm -hmm. uh, just before you discuss with us yeah, but, uh, about the chanting box. Yes. Yeah, what is the mean by the chanting box, Maharaj? Well, a chanting box, it's a, just an electronic chip, a mic, a, you know, an elect, a microchip, which has probably chanting on it. And you can, you know, you plug it in and, it, it, you know, there are different melodies also, Prabhupada chanting and Prabhupada sometimes singing kirtan. And you can choose which particular one you want and it will continue chanting. The sound, you know, the chanting will come endlessly without stopping because it's all on a microchip. So you, uh -huh. you just plug it in and it just plays all the time. You turn, oh, okay. you, you turn it on and then it just chants, it just keeps chanting and chanting. So, this, we call it a chanting box, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh, okay, okay. Because I'm chanting every day almost 30, 14 round. Okay. It this morning, uh, uh, 12 round is uh, evening or so. Mm -hmm. Very good. Then, uh, okay. then in adults, it increase more. Maybe 64, like this. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, you, you, if you, when you chant, you know, when we have the chanting box, many devotees, they like to chant along with Prabhupada to check their, oh. you know, chanting, to keep the, to get their speed, the, the pace from Prabhupada. You, they hear Prabhupada chanting, they chant along with Prabhupada at the same speed, and that way they, you know, they can check that they're chanting properly. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, we'll go ahead. Uh, text number 27. Going on to describe more about the, the vision of one in knowledge, the, you know, Jnana Chaksus. Text number 27. Know that whatever you see in existence, both moving and non-moving, is only a combination of the field of activities and the knower of the field. Okay, the field of activities, the body, the knower of the field, the soul. So this is spiritual vision. All living entities, whatever you see in existence, both moving and non-moving, and Prabhupada talks, what are the non-moving things? Trees, mountains, hills, they're non-moving. There are many existences which are moving. All of them are combinations of material nature and the superior nature, the living entity. Okay, so we want, we want to see that, the spiritual nature behind everything, within every living entity, even the mountains sometimes and the hills, they can also be living entities. Text number 28. One who sees the Super-Soul accompanying the individual soul in all bodies 
and who understands that neither the soul nor the super soul within the destructible the destructible body is ever destroyed actually sees okay so again the, the same point the vision spiritual vision seeing the the soul within the body of the living entity although the body is destroyed the body is going to take birth and the body remember the six changes which the body goes through someone remember that six changes of the body take birth grow yeah changes take birth grow and dwindle 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 it's by, by product per then it begins to decay yeah begins the last stage is okay good so you've got them yeah it takes birth grows for some time then maintains for some time produces byproducts then dwindles and then dies right so living entities they go through that some creatures they take birth in the night in the morning they're all dead they've been through all the six different phases of life we take a bit longer we take you know like a hundred years the on the depth on the higher planets is different okay so we should understand neither the soul nor the super souls ever destroyed they are going to leave the body text 29 one who sees the super soul equally present everywhere in every living being does not degrade himself by the mind thus he approaches the transcendental destination so important not to be degraded by the mind so we have to understand this with the mind that the super soul equally present everywhere in every living being every living entity well of course you've had that earlier this paramatma vision seeing that all living entities equally then text 30 one who can see that all activities are performed by the body situate which is created by material nature and sees that the self does nothing actually sees so everything is done by the material nature the self the soul is not doing anything the body is like the machine right the body is a machine but the machine needs also a machine operator the, so the soul is there it's the soul although although it describes here the soul does nothing but the soul actually desires and that desire from the soul that causes actions it causes the body that causes the material nature to begin to act because knows the desire of the individual living entity text 31 when a sensible man ceases to see different identities due to different material bodies and he sees how beings are expanded everywhere he attains to the brahman conception the brahman conception right seeing everything as brahman seeing all different identities you know someone's black someone's white someone's a dog someone some cat some tree some human different forms of life we see everything equally we see the brahman the soul within everyone so don't make distinction by the different bodies that's the vision of brahman Text 32, those with the vision of eternity can see that the imperishable, the imperishable soul is transcendental, eternal, beyond the modes of nature. Despite contact with the body origin, the soul neither does anything nor is entangled. So, Lord Krishna is just describing here the relationship here between the soul and the body. 
that although the soul is there within the body, the soul is not being affected. The body is in the modes of nature, but the soul is not affected by the modes of nature. The soul is always transcendental, always pure. Then text 33 goes on to give an... an yes? Maharaj, I have a picture. Uh, I'm not understanding this. That here you, it's written, O oh, Arjuna, the soul neither does anything nor is entangled. So, um, who's entangled? Then who's getting entangled? The living entities, the field of activity, you know, the, the mind, the, all, all these things. The, the elements of the field of activities, and they're becoming entangled. We become attached to things. The soul doesn't become attached. We become happy. So who's this, so who's this V here, which we are talking about? We're talking about the, the, the field of activities, the body. Okay, so it means the gross and the subtle both. Yeah, right. Mm. Where the do soul, where is pure. soul is pure, soul will not get entangled, soul will not do anything, but you, you, you said that soul desires, so that the desire part is coming from the soul. Yes. The desire of the living entity, yes. So that desire can contribute to, um, to acquiring these material bodies? Yes. Right. How soul is not doing anything. Soul is doing, soul is desiring. So soul is doing something. Yeah, not active. But desire. The desire is subtle. Just the desire. Maharaj, and also the uh, mind also desires. What is the difference between the mind desiring and the soul desiring? Yeah. Well, the mind desires according to the body, because the mind is on the, the platform of the body, the physical platform, right? We allow the mind to, on, I, the mind is thinking, I'm the body, we're part of the body. The mind is thinking about the senses, directing the senses. The mind is guiding our different senses, how to act. Remember in the example of the chariot, the horses are the senses and the mind is like the reins. So the reins, the senses are guiding them, the, are being guided by the mind, the desires of the mind and which are in the mind. But this desire of the soul is a different thing. The desire of the soul, you see we have, it's actually either surrender to Krishna or surrender to Maya. It's that, that's the desire of the soul, one way or the other, Krishna or Maya. That's our independence. We have to choose between Krishna and Maya. Are we going to surrender to Krishna or are we going to go to Maya? Which way are we going to go? So that's the soul. The soul decides like that. But then the mind thinking about the senses, you know, what are we are going to do, where are we going to enjoy, what are we going to see, what are we going to touch, what are we going to smell, what are we going to taste. This is the mind. Understand? But the soul, yeah, 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 the soul true. is, it means for the soul is Krishna or Maya. Which way are we going to go? That's our independence. We have that choice. As soon as we choose Maya, then we come under the material energy and the senses and the mind and everything. The mind is thinking what to do, where to go, what to smell. But when we surrender to Krishna, then we're under Krishna's shelter. Krishna takes over. So, so here the, body, the soul does nothing, but it has the free will to desire. 
and he guide, that desire it guides the other things yes yeah like that maharaj yes. there is one more uh, confusion here yeah. uh, can can i ask maharaj yeah, yeah please ask Uh, this in the text twenty seven translation, uh, there is written that uh, both the moving and non moving is only a combination of field of activities and the knower of the field. That means both moving and non moving is only a combination of material energy and spiritual energy. That's what it means, Maharaj. Right? Yes. So how non-moving? How do I correlate non-moving having spiritual energy? Because, well, Prabhupada's ex- non-moving. You give an example like a tree. A tree's not moving, but trees also have a soul. Yeah. Okay. Trees partially we can say it's moving. Like, but say suppose a mountain or or well, stone. Well, some mountains. Come... Some mountains also have souls. Some mountains okay. are also they have. That's like a volcano. You know, they have some kind of life there within them. There are some mountain. Uh, I know. In in uh, I was in China, and th- there's a story there that there used to be flying mountains. In Srimad Bhagavatam, also it talks about flying mountains. So some souls, some mountains also have souls. Some times impersonalists. Desire to be very great and stand very high and very. They get bodies like a big tree or a mountain sometimes. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, also, one more thing. This does this consciousness type of consciousness, five type of consciousness is there. So, does this consciousness also contribute to the soul? Which consciousness? As we say, the moving and non-moving. So mountain, the sankuchita, uh, then mukulita, or like I mean, there are five types of consciousness. One consciousness is, is called as sankuchita, which the the mountains has, and uh, and the mukulita in the human beings, and the developed and undeveloped consciousness. Does this consciousness uh, are in con- in accordance with the soul, or it is accordance with the Subtle body. Yes, it will depend on the body. The body is certainly going to affect the consciousness. Yeah. Different bodies, according to the body, the consciousness will be restricted. Just like in the tree, the consciousness is very much restricted and covered. The human form of life, we have the higher consciousness. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, Maharaj, I'm listening. I'm listening. Okay, is that all right? You can understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it depends on the body. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can can we go on? Can I? Can we just finish this tonight? Have we got time, Prabhu? A facilitator. Yes, Maharaj. No problem. If we yes, go- Maharaj, we can go and uh, finish uh, this chapter today. Okay. So we're we're at text number thirty-three. Prabhupada's giving an uh, Lord Krishna is giving an an analogy here in text thirty-three. He talks about the he said the sky, due to its subtle nature, does not mix with anything, although it is all pervading. Similarly, the soul situated in Brahman. Brahman vision does not mix with the body, though situated in that body. Very nice analogy, very clear, that the soul is within the body. Just like the air doesn't mix with anything, you know, air is different, you know, you have water, water can mix with everything, but air doesn't mix, it doesn't mix with anything, it's always separate. So similarly, the soul, although it's in the body, it doesn't mix with anything. And therefore, when the body finishes, then it leaves the body, it can go off, take another body. 
Then going ahead, text 34, Krishna continues with another analogy. So both 33 and 34 giving very nice analogies. Krishna says, O son of Bharat, as the sun alone illuminates all this universe, so does the living entity, one within the body, illuminate the entire body by consciousness. So this nice analogy, the sun, one sun illuminates the whole universe. In the same way, one soul situated in the heart spreads consciousness through the body, through every tip of the body. You know, our toes also have consciousness. Someone stands on your toe and you scream, ah, you're on my toe, or you stub your toe, you, you know, because there's consciousness there. That consciousness is coming from the soul, which is in the heart, and it's spread through every tip of the body just like the one sun in the universe. So very nice examples to conclude this teaching. And then the final verse, just a summary of the teachings. Those who see with eye of knowledge the difference between the body and the knower of the body can also understand the process of liberation from bondage in material nature attained to the supreme goal. Right? So the goal of this knowledge, to get us out of this material world, to solve the problem of birth and death. And if we understand this knowledge very carefully, then certainly we'll give up this material body, we won't come back. Okay, some, some more questions? Anybody? No one? Maharaj, yes. Maharaj, please, in this, just a small thing, in this last verse translation, the difference between the body and the knower of the body. So the knower of the body is the soul, right? The, the living entity. The soul and the super soul, two knowers in the body. So it's referring to both. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Anything else? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Uh, one small doubt. I don't know whether it is relevant or not, but it came to my mind. I just want to ask you. You said that the soul desires. So according to that, uh, we perform our action either going towards Krishna's service or uh, attaching to Maya. So when we attach to Maya and do certain things, no Maharaj, we'll get the fructive result of that. Then uh, that effect uh, the body will face or the soul have to face? Uh, can you give the explanation for that? The soul is always pure. The soul is always... But, but the, we will take different bodies. We will be put into different conditions of life. Okay. And if, if you uh, read when we rest, rest. Rest. die and leave our body and go, then uh, if you are doing some pious things or anything like... Uh, uh, like the yogis you can take, they will go to like uh, higher planets, uh, there they will enjoy for some times and come back. Is this the soul uh, which enjoys there or suffers or how it is, Maharaj? No, the soul, the soul is not in, in enjoying or suffering. The soul is, in, it's the, the body which is enjoying. The, there's that impression of enjoyment. Yeah, the, we're thinking we're enjoying. It's the body which is enjoying. And it's the body which is suffering. They will be getting a, another body when we leave uh, our, this material body. Oh, when we go back to Godhead, you mean? No, when we go back to Godhead, uh, Maharaj, we know that we won't be taking birth again. But uh, suppose you are doing some pious things, you are going to some heavenly planets. There you are enjoying that. So yes. that is the soul which is enjoying or you are getting some spiritual body there? You, you get a, you a subtle body in the higher planets, heavenly planets. It's got, the bodies are more subtle, but it's the body which is enjoying, right? The enjoyment. Okay. The nature of the soul the soul's nature is Satchit Ananda, eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. So the soul is always blissful in any situation. The soul is blissful. Always blissful. 
it is a subtle body which is uh, yes. either uh, right. dying or suffering. Yes. Okay, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Thank you. Okay, any other questions from anyone? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Okay. Maharaj, uh, you said that uh, soul is pure, so, so and it does not suffer, right? Right. My identity, my identity is that I am soul. Right. So my nature is Satchit Ananda. Yes. And then, so that I, I am not suffering here then? Right. The soul is not suffering, but because we are in bodily consciousness, we think we are suffering. Then Maharaj, why the soul has, I mean, taken, is taking different, different bodies? It's because of the uh, soul's, uh, something to do with soul. That's why it's taking different, different bodies, it's not it. Yeah, we take different bodies due to our different desires, because we act independently of Krishna. We don't surrender to Krishna, we act independent of the Supreme Lord, and we take the position of the enjoyer. And we're thinking it's all for this world is all for our enjoyment, independent of Krishna. That's why we're taking. Whom you're referring to? Whom you're referring to? Uh, we. We means this soul, right? Yes. I mean, then I'm mean, getting this point, right? I mean, uh, I I also have a doubt. Yeah. You can I can I say is somebody else asking? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Maharaj, you said that the soul is pure. Yes. Uh, so, and then you say that soul desires. So the soul can either desire to surrender to Krishna or to be independent of Krishna. So when the soul is pure, how is it thinking to have an independent desire? Well, that's our free will. Krishna gives us free will. He doesn't force us. He doesn't force us. You see, if we, if we, if we were just not had to be in Krishna with no choice, then there's no free will. There's no independent. So when there's no free will, then there's no real love. But pure love, love is not forced. Love comes naturally. Where there, you know, you have a choice. So Krishna gives each gives all of us that free will to choose. Do we want to love Krishna or not? When we don't want to love Krishna, we come into this material world and we take birth in this world. We're tr and in this world, what are we trying to do? We're trying to exploit the material world. We're thinking it's mine, it's for my enjoyment. Right? We're all working hard to get money and to enjoy and build an empire for ourselves, and we want to live here forever. So Maharaj, in the same context, let's say uh, my body right now, if I give an example, let's say my body right now desires to eat some kind of a sweet, so it's my body and my mind which is desiring to eat some kind of sweet. So does that mean the soul inside me is also desiring to eat that sweet which is not uh, which is not right according to our Krishna consciousness which I'm not supposed to eat that sweet but my body and my mind is desiring to eat that sweet. So is the soul also desiring to eat the sweet? No. No, the soul doesn't desire to eat sweets. The soul's not active in that. That's the body, right? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yeah. Uh, if we desire a long life and devote our life to Krishna consciousness, it is okay or whatever is our fate, our life could be that will be. <laughs> I desire a long life. 
Well, you know, there's one purport, Prabhupada makes the point that uh, you know, Lord Chaitanya, he only stayed in this world, he wasn't in this world a long time. He was in here for 48 years. And Shankaracharya, he was in the world only 32 years. But they made great... <laughs> <laughs> they made great contributions to the world. But, uh, you know, some, 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 some trees, they live a very long time. Do you want to have a, a long life like a tree? You know, I mean, that's not very good, really, to have consciousness like a tree. So it's not the long life which is important, but it's the consciousness. So better full consciousness, even if it's only a moment of full consciousness. That's a lot better than a life like a tree. <coughs> we don't want to just be like a tree, uh, just stand a long time, right? So it's not the long life. That's not important. But the consciousness is very important. You agree? Hare Krishna? Mm -hmm. Yes, Mara, thank you. <laughs> you understand my point, Maharaji? Yeah? Yes, Maharaj. But uh, if, you, if you, we devote our life to Krishna conscious, then it is okay. Yes, right. If you're devoted to Krishna, then we're up to it's up to Krishna. If Mare Krishna Rakeke, Rake Krishna Mareke. Krishna wants us to live, we'll live. If Krishna wants us to die, we'll die. We serve Krishna here, and next life we go on and serve Krishna some other place. There's nothing to lament, because death is just a change of the body. You know, just like, you know, when you get a new car, when you get a new car, you don't lament about the old car. Oh, you get a new car, you're happy, you know, I've got a new car, I'm going to come, and, come for a drive in my new car. And so same way we get a new body. The, you know, this body gets old and troublesome, break, breaks down. So when we, when we get a new body, nothing to lament. We serve Krishna here, we go on to serve Krishna some other place. So if we're in Krishna consciousness, it's, it's not a problem because we understand what is actually death. It's just simply the change of the body. Right? Hare Krishna. Yeah, thank you, Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Any Hare other... Krishna, Maharaj. Yes, Hare Krishna. Um, I apologize for going back to this topic, but uh, related to the 32nd shloka, uh, at the end it's written, therefore the activities performed due to his contact with material bodies do not entangle him. Okay. So because of the activities that the material body does, aren't we, as like, are, isn't the soul trapped in the cycle of material birth and death, uh, repeated birth and death? Like due to the activities that this body is doing, we get our pap karma, and because of that, the soul is trapped in this repeated cycle. Yes, so but how the, is it that like... the soul is responsible because it's the soul which initiates the process in this material nature by the soul's desire to enjoy, to be independent of Krishna. You know, when we yes. when we select Maya rather than Krishna, we come into the material world, you know? When we don't want to be the servant, when we want to be the master, that's, when we, that's where it all starts. Then we come into this material world, then the material nature acts, and we start to associate with the material energy, and we take different bodies. So doesn't that mean that we are entangled, Maharaj? Yes. Even if it is the soul's desires. Well, the soul, but the soul itself is not actually entangled. Just like we imagine we're entangled, right? We're, you know, 
you, you maybe you, you're, you're studying, you're, you're entangled in studies, or you have a relationship, you're entangled with a boy or something, you're having a love, a love affair with a boy, you're entangled, something like this, you know, we get entangled in different jobs and responsibilities, family commitments, entanglements, you know, but this is nothing to do with the soul. Okay, so it is just this material body that is uh, preoccupied or entangled with the material nature. Right, yeah. Okay, okay. thank you Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anybody else there with questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj, one more question. Mm -hmm. uh, so the the soul uh, does it have to pass through all the uh, uh, species like you we have uh, 84 lakh species uh, so does the soul have to pass through all these species to come to human uh, birth mm. <laughs> no not necessarily usually what happens not usually what happens is when the soul enters into the spiritual world we enter in the higher planets, in the higher, higher. And some people even, some, I've heard that some people say that we become Brahma. The first birth you take in the material world is the Lord Brahma. And like that, then we come down and we take, the, you know, from Brahma, we come down to the lower level. Brahma Loka, you come down to heavenly planets, you know, Indra Loka, where Indra is, and from the heavenly planets, they come down. And, and earth and from earth and you can go even down into hell and you, but you don't have to you don't have to do all that it depends how we misuse oh. our, it will depend on how we misuse the independence we're responsible for our activities okay okay so uh, uh, actually so from the higher birth uh, the soul takes lower birth because of the activities it uh, performs yes. in the material body. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj. Yes. Maharaj. Uh, in between my voice, your voice got cut off because of my internet. I think so. Uh, one of the Prabhu has asked a question about the uh, desiring the body of eating something. Some suppose some 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 sweet it would be. Eat. So I couldn't understand whether this desire is from the body or from the soul. No, this desire to eat some sweet or something, this is from the body. Coming from, you know, maybe the tongue, the tongue itself desires to taste. We see a sweet, we want to taste it, it's the tongue desiring to taste. Even, even desire to eat meat or something like that is also from the body or from the soul? Not from because the soul. They, it's they not are... from the soul. It's not not from the soul. Not from the soul. No. Okay, but one one of the one of the uh, you know the there is one uh, drama which is been has seen in Eastern sites. Uh, the drama name is the soul. The drama name itself is soul, where it shows that the the soul dies and afterwards uh, in the uh, when while dying he he he's performing the devotional services. But when uh, the Maya agent comes and want to trap him at the time. He doesn't get trapped in all the agents, but one of the agents, suppose they show the gulab jamun, and he get tra traps, and again, again he take the next birth. Something like that they show. I don't know how authentically uh, it will be placed in this concentration that the uh, uh, thought of eating that gulab jamun and coming back to the body of the human form, uh, I'm a little bit confused in that part. Whether the I'm not. I hope you. Uh, I'm not. I'm not familiar with this drama. I'm not familiar with the okay. drama. But uh, from what you've described, from what you've described, you know, somebody's leaving the body and they're attracted to eat some sweet. So, yeah, correct, correct. So, so and due to that attraction, this, they come back to the material world. Yes, because you still have some desire. You still have some desire to enjoy the body. So you'll come back in the material but, world. But that desire is from the body, not from the soul. Then That's how it can be on the on the part of the soul? Then well, we have to develop the, the spiritual desires. We have to cultivate spiritual desires if we want to have desire of the okay. soul. We have to understand the desire okay. of the soul. What is what does Krishna want? 
You see? So that's why we, give, okay. we have to learn to develop a taste for hearing and chanting. And then we can... Okay, okay, okay. Yeah? Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Okay, anybody else there? Any other questions, Prabhus? Uh, Maharaj, just one one example can you give where you just mentioned about that the soul desires. I think that, that is one of the uh, points or the discussion points which we are trying to uh, circle around here. So. One example, if you can give us where the soul is desiring, uh, we understood in terms of a body desiring or the mind desiring. It's only one example that will help us. The desire of the soul? Well, the desire of the soul is to chant the holy name, to serve Krishna. The desire of the soul is in, all in relation to Krishna, Krishna's service. That's the, the pure, the real desire of the soul. Desire to hear the Holy Krishna. Name, yeah. Hare Krishna. Okay, Hare Krishna. Of course, if, if somebody desires prasadam, then that's, that's a bit better. If one simply desires galamjaman, but one should desire prasadam, you see, the taste of Krishna prasadam, then that's a higher consciousness. But then, we're warned, we shouldn't just be thinking only, oh, a galabjuman, you know. One simply wants to, to desire prasadam, whatever is the mercy of Krishna. Not that we're attached to a particular kind of prasadam, because then it also becomes a material kind of desire. Our own passionate, our own lust to enjoy a particular taste. Rather we want to taste Prasadam, the mercy of Krishna. Is it clear? Yeah, it's very much clear now. Okay. So, I think we can stop there tonight. Is that yes, all right? Yes, I think Maharaj. Yes. Any other questions, is there? Should be enough. Okay, so thank you all very much. So we'll go on to chapter 14 tomorrow. Uh, I mean, on the next class will be on Sunday night, right? Yes, marriage. Okay. So, thank yes. you. Uh, reading assignment for all the students. Uh, please read the uh, chapter 14 and uh, attend, uh, come to the class. Okay. And since Ramadan is, is starting, uh, should we change the time or you are all okay with the same timings? It's okay with the same timing. Same time. At least better Can we make half an hour early so Maharaj can take less early? Timing is okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay, no problem. Yeah, half an hour, no issue. Half an hour, okay, is no problem. Half an hour. Come with the Mataji. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Babu. Yeah, can we can we make it four thirty for the next classes? Prabhu, no problem. Whatever it is. Yes, Prabhu. Okay. Okay. Everybody is agreeing for four thirty. Yes, yes, Prabhu. Yes. yes. Maharaj, is it is it okay with you, Maharaj? Okay, six o'clock. Means that is your Indian time, six o'clock. Six o'clock your time, Maharaj. Okay. The, the the only thing is the only thing, Prabhu, is they have kirtan here at that time. So it's a bit noisy at that time, you know. I just, I just, will it be okay? The background noise won't disturb. No, Maharaj, that's not a, that's not a good idea actually. If there's a background noise, then we, we, we must, uh, it, it won't be good, Maharaj. So then we should just leave it as it is, then, because uh, they have an RT at six o'clock here, so. Better we start 6.30, when the RT is finished. Oh, okay, okay, Maharaj. We will we'll, uh, maintain the same timings. Okay, so we are all con reconvening at... Uh, uh, 5 p.m. local. Uh. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. 